Beautiful. Hey there, everybody. Um, my name's Meg. Thank you so much for joining us uh, online today. We're going to be doing some movement today, so I'll just give it a moment or two just to let people jump on um, and get sorted. Um, if you are on a, a tile floor or a wooden floor, grab yourself a tea towel. Um, if you're on a carpet floor, grab yourself a, like a Tupperware container lid or a takeaway container lid. Um, we might use them at the end for a little bit of core work. So if you are using or if you're on a wooden or a tiled floor, grab a tea towel. Um, if you are on a carpet floor, um, then grab yourself a takeaway container lid. If you don't have either of these, that is totally okay. Um, it is just for something we're going to do at the end. I'll give you guys a moment to grab that uh, and get sorted. So just taking a time with you with um, this movement practice for about 40 minutes today. Um, and as I said, my name's Meg, I'm from Redhead Wellness Century. This is my passion to share movement um, because if we don't move well, we, um, we really stunt our longevity and our spines uh, and our joints are key to moving well. We have three planes in our body that we should move all the time through, our frontal, our transverse and our sagittal plane. And a lot of the time we very much go in linear patterns. So we sit down or we squat linear, we lunge, um, we walk and we don't really explore the full range of our body. So we are going to start standing and if you did my practices last week we did do a lot of movement um, into our joints through a juicing practice so we're just going to start by getting some movement happening into our knee joints our hips and our spine so we're going to bring your feet about hip distance apart and if you've been sitting um, go really gentle through here we're going to start to create some hip circles Try not to move too quickly, so we're just allowing the hips to move around the joint. We're going to be also creating movement into the ankle joints and the knee joints here as well, obviously, as we start to move. You'll notice that it's not only affecting our hips, but our spine, the underside of our feet, so we're moving laterally and medially. And we're really just allowing the body to free flow here in one direction. So. It's like we're stirring a pot with our hips. So taking a time to just explore what's going on with your spine and your hips and your joints today before we get into this practice. So we're going to continue with that for a moment, just for about 10 more seconds. And then we'll start to move back the other direction. So grinding down into what's called the tripod of the foot. So again, I spoke on the tripod last week. So we want about 60% of our weight in our heels and about 40% of the weight into the balls of the foot, not much weight into the toes. So allowing the hips to move around the shoulders are relaxed here. Try to really relax the body and only moving to your degree. So some of us might be smaller circles here through the hips. Some of us might be finding larger circles here. It's not about pushing to a point that doesn't feel right for you, you just go to your edge. From our hips, we're going to bring ourselves back in, feet a little bit more narrow, find that tripod of the foot again. So we're creating a triangular shape from our heel out to the balls of the foot. And we're gonna slowly move around the knee joint. So again, if there's any knee issues because we are on video format, um, either on Zoom or on a recording, it is really, really important that you listen to you. So keep this really, really slow and steady so that you can actually ask questions as to what's going on with my knees today. What do I need to look after? Sorry about the pun, that was pretty sad, wasn't it? So just moving through, getting an idea of how your knees feel, like we're stirring a pot now with our knees. Now change direction. You'll notice too that we're working through the feet. So again, if we are wearing shoes a lot, we're going to be really um, stunting the, um, the work that we 
do in our feet. We have four layers of, of muscle in our feet. And if we continue to put them in shoes, we are allowing the muscle to um, depreciate and then the, the fascia and connective tissue have to try and do the job of the foot of the muscles. And therefore we start to have problems upstream in our bodies as well. So from our knees, we're going to now start to just move um, into the spine. So when we're moving into the spine, we're actually going to just work into the pelvic area first. So we're going to do a slight posterior tilt to an anterior tilt, and then just move around the sacrum. So just doing some juicing into this lower back region, again, which can get really, really tight uh, and aggravated with sitting. Um, and again, just moving in linear patterns and just doing things on repeat. So trying to create a little bit of movement just around the pelvis area, the sacrum, the low back. Don't worry what it looks like. I just want you to feel like you're moving a train wheel. So you visualize the, the sacrum, the pelvis. So posterior tilt to anterior tilt and up and around. Really great for digestion as well. So we're going to take that back the other way. And again, if you are feeling any tightness into your lower back, try not to come too much into a posterior tilt. So you're just working really small and keep it super slow. The shoulders are relaxed, the rest of the body is relaxed. Nice. So from here, we're then going to just do some twisting through the body. So we want to keep the hip bones square and we're just going to let the hands kind of Connect with the body and we want to twist from the torso. So soften your knees as you twist. And again, we're doing a gentle massage into the back of the kidneys and across into the digestive organs by letting the arms just land into our body. So creating really nice movement. So twisting is super important for us, especially if we sit. And just let the arms be quite heavy as they connect with the body. Beautiful. From here, bring it back to um, our standing. We're going to do a little bit of shoulder mobility here, just work to your degree. We're going to create a figure of eight. So going down and around, creating a figure of eight with the shoulder joint. So just moving through. Again, with any shoulder uh, limitations, you just work the best that you can in this area. So working through this figure of eight, and if it feels good, you can throw in a little bit of knees here. And create a little bit more speed if you like to get some blood moving into the fingertips and into the joints. We'll go five, four, three, two, and one. Usually I'd go back the other way, but for the sake of today, we'll keep it nice and short. Let's move into that other shoulder. So figure of eight pattern. Start slow. Again, any shoulder injuries, you just you work little. Right? So we honour and move through the joints the best we can. Rather than get um, annoyed or frustrated or not do an exercise, we ask the question, what can we do? Right? How can we move to send some movement um, and some oxygenated blood into the area so that we keep it moving rather than stuck and stagnant? We'll go for five, four, three, two, and one. Cool. Little jumps here. So we're just jumping on the spot. If jumping on the spot doesn't work for you, just bring knee to elbow. Just training a little bit of movement through the spine, get the blood pumping. Keep the shoulders nice and relaxed and loose. It should feel pretty good if you need to hold your boobs, do that too. Whatever works, let it feel good for five, four, three, two, and one. And just a little bit of self-massage here. Make two fists and we're gonna massage. The intensity, of course, is up to you. Down the body. Inner thighs, waist, glutes, shoulders, chest, neck, down the arms. And I want you to spend the next 30 seconds just figuring this out on your own. So going to areas that may need your attention, low back, glutes, hamstrings. So just trying to get blood moving. Feels really good, really good. It's great in the morning. Might look a little silly, but that's what it's all about. But movement is movement, it's getting ourselves moving well, having fun, and having a little bit of a play. Ten more seconds, wherever you are. Good, and relax. 
Cool. We're just going to take five deep breaths here, feet wide. So as you inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, come down, fingertips touch. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Breathe in. And breathe out. Two more. Breathe in. Breathe out. And again, breathe in. And breathe out. We're going to hold here in this squat. Bring the arms out to the side. So we're soft into the shoulders here. Really soft into the hands. Just let the arms be out to the side. Ground down into that tripod of the foot. The inner thighs are on here, nice and strong. Belly to spine and breathe. We're going to hold for another 30 seconds. And if you smile, I know I can't see you guys, but it makes it so much easier. Relax the shoulders away from the ears, soft hands. Sense of softness in the face, strength into the legs in that mountain pose. So a few different moves to get through. You do your best with the movement. Don't worry if you can't do anything. You just do what you can do. Movement is key. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Cool. So the first thing I'm going to work towards is working our core. It's a hollow body hold. We're going to be working into 40 seconds worth of work. So when we come into this hollow body hold, right, the option number one is coming down to the back making sure you hold onto the back of the hamstrings with your hands the knees are stacked above the hips that's option one option two the chin will come off the chest hands are open option three it's a single leg hollow body hold so coming down to the ground we're going in about 20 seconds so take your time to come down so we're trying to work into the deep core muscles we want to press the spine into the ground I do have the clock going so you know that I'm not going to cheat you on time. Coming down, press the spine into the floor, knees stack above the hips, hold onto your thighs or the backs of your thighs and we breathe. Chin off chest and press the spine down into the ground. So options here, take off your hands if you like. Palms are open, fingertips are spread. If you want to do a single leg extension, point the toe, squeeze the quad and hold with one leg out about five seconds and then change. So I'll leave this up to you guys. Keep breathing through this. We've got about 10 seconds left to go. So 40 seconds on, about 10 or 15 seconds for me to tell you the next exercise. So 10 seconds or under, sorry, five, four, three, two, and one. Rock yourself up. Come into a side and sit. So a bit of mobility. Right foot in front of left quadricep. So we've done these before, if you've done my classes before, I do these all the time. Use your hands for support, lean back, change sides. So we want to keep the feet hip distance apart, and we're trying to get an internal and an external rotation through the hip joint. So if you've done these before, you can start to take off your hands, and you might roll backwards, and that's perfect. But we're looking for a sense of smoothness here, so a softness, slow it right down. We want to use our core here, doing really, really well. So take your time. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Amazing. This next one is a step up. Two different options. The right foot will go forward. So I'll show both options now. If there is any knee issues with having the knee on the ground, all right, you're going to work a little step back lunge instead, so not coming from the ground. So that's option number two, into a boxer lunge. If not, you'll come down from the ground, you're going to push up through the right heel, slowly rise, and slowly back down. We want to take our time. We're going three, two, and one. Stay on the right foot. So we want to really work the tripod of the right foot here. What I mean by that is when we pay attention to pressing down into the heel, and the balls of the foot, that means our knee is going to track in line with our ankle joint. We really want to try and eliminate any medial rotation here. So use what you need to. If you need to hold onto a bar to make this happen, try not to rush it. Try not to use momentum. This is not fast. We're really slowing it down. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. 
and just changing sides straight away. Straight into that left side, stepping up and slowly stepping down. For those of you that don't want to come down to the knee, you'll just be bringing that back foot back a little bit, belly to spine and a little dip in that back knee. But please take your time. So wherever you are, use your core, try to make it as fluid as possible. There is hardly or not any weight in the toes of the left foot. 15 seconds left and then we're going to come down to the ground. Alright, four, three, two and one. Well done. Coming down to our bellies. Setting up either our cobra or our superman. So, option number one, elbows by the side. Pressing up, coming into our cobra pose. Option number two, arms out to goalpost arms. And we lift up, feet can come off optional two. So coming into our supermans, we're going in three, two, and one. Option one, just peel your chest off the floor and come back. So spinal compression. So using your breath to inhale and exhale coming down. Option two, maybe the hands come off. Squeeze your upper back muscles and come back down. So breathing in and then breathing out. Option three, using the posterior chain and the hamstrings by lifting the feet off the ground. The inhale lifts you and the exhale comes back down. Nice work everybody. Five, four, three, two and one slowly pushing up we come into a tabletop position here so from our tabletop position we want our fingers spread wide like really really wide fingers this first one we're all going to do what's called a turbo cat so a great one for working and strengthening the wrist and working our core so we want the knees stacked under the hips and the wrist stacked under the shoulders that's your start point from here we want to make sure that the tailbone is not tucked uh, not in a posterior tilt we want to Tuck the tailbone under, anterior tilt, so tuck of the tailbone. The toes tuck under to stretch the underside of our feet. Now you can either stay here and push the ground away or we're going to lift off our knees about three, sec uh, three centimetres in three, two and one. So possibly lifting off those knees, chin tucks in, I want you to look right between your hands. So don't worry about what's going on in the screen. Arms are dead straight, fingers are spread wide. Knees are off the ground about three to four centimetres. Belly draws to spine, upper back is rounded. Anytime you need to drop those knees down, you can. We're holding for about another 15 seconds here. Try not to look around, keep your neck and chin tucked in. The spine super rounded, belly drawing to spine for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two and one, bring your knees, it's a cheeky one isn't it? Bring your knees wide, sink your hips back over your heels and find a child's pose. Well done everybody. So we're gonna come up to stand for some single leg balancing. So I'm really big on single leg balancing because one, it helps us keep our balance. Two, it strengthens the glute medius, which is responsible for keeping our hips open into hip talk, right? When our glute medius is weak, due from again sitting and wearing shoes, we find that the hips are gonna roll inwards, that's gonna have an effect onto our knee joint, the knee's gonna do the same, and then we're gonna end up with surgery sometime down our life because we've got all this degeneration into the knee joint. So, coming into the tripod of the foot, soften the right knee and start to lift up your left leg. So if you need to hold on to something here, do so. But we're gonna to start to move the left hip. So we're balancing on one leg, floating the left hip at around to your degree. So again, forget what's going on in the screen. I want you guys to focus your eyes on one point and just come into a standing leg balance. So no weight into the toes on the standing foot, you just do you. So explore what our hips are meant to do. Our hip is a ball and socket joint. It's not a hinge, but we're training it to be like a hinge from all the sitting and forward motion that we do. 10 seconds. Move really slow. Three, two, and one. Amazing. So straight to the other side. Find the tripod of the left foot, soften the left knee, 
no weight in the toes and this is as little or as big as you like for this first round just start little it's really easy to get frustrated with ourselves with this stuff movement is a very humble practice it teaches us to be very okay with where we're at we let go of striving and pushing and trying to find a goal because there is no goal in this stuff we're just moving for longevity we're moving to feel good not to burn calories or anything like that just to to play to have fun and when we come at movement with that frame of mind, the body responds in a, in a really great way because it's not under any stress to chase a number or reach a certain goal or, or a weight. Um, and so the body responds really, really well when we just move to feel good. 10 more seconds. Good work, everyone. Three, two, and one. We have one more in the series. We're going to come down to the ground. This is our... Crab, which is really important if we're on our computers, we want to draw our shoulders back. So fingertips facing forward. If your fingertips need to face backwards, do that. Press down through those heels, lift up your butt. We're going to hold. So we want to squeeze the hips here. So sorry, squeeze the glutes here. So the hips are lifted, the toes are light. There is no weight at all into those toes. At any time if you need to come down, you come down, take a breather, and then press back up and then hold. So if you need to shake out your wrist at any time, I get it. That's perfectly normal to feel this if you're not on your hands. We're not here for much longer. Squeeze your bum, lift your hips, breathe. So we're really opening up the back of the shoulder joint here, opening up the chest. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come down, roll on your back. Give your knees a squeeze, possibly coming into a happy baby. So lift up your hands, catch the ankle joint, draw the knees wide, and maybe flex the feet. So you guys stay there for at least a minute. And I'll tell you the good news is we have two more rounds. So I know you're all smiling and you're going, yes, that's so exciting. Because um, movement is fun, and it should be. Um, when we do movement as such or, um, you know, exercise, we can tend to get in a mindset of punishing ourselves. And that just puts us under stress, um, which is where we'll hold more body fat because the body is under stress to try and get it done and not particularly enjoying. So when we flip the script and use the words, I get to move rather than I have to, the body responds so much better. So we're going to go back on the top. So we're going in 30 seconds. So it's back to a hollow body hold. Couple options, always options. Either stay with the first variation and be okay with that. Or if you want more, what you can do is the palms come off and you can do little rocks here. So it's called a hollow body rock. You can do the same thing with the leg extended. That's totally fine. Some of you might even like to extend two legs out by zipping the belly in towards the backbone. It's really important the spine is looked after here by creating a boat shape. Get ready, we're going in three, two, one. Option one, hands clasp the back of the legs, toes point, knees stacked above hips, shoulders off, use your core, really hard to talk here. Option two, palms open. Option three, little rocks. And we've got, oh, goodness, how long? 20 seconds left from now. So wherever you're at, keep moving through. Some of you might want to take that longer leg option so long as the spine is not coming off the ground. Breathe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Woo! Should most definitely feel your core and then your lower abdominals, your transverse abdominals, which are great for supporting the lower spine. Right foot comes in front of left quad, side bend sit. So we're going to use our core, mobility into the hips. So slowly turn and twist. Turn and twist. Option, fold. So inhale up and exhale, fold. Just an option. Inhale up and exhale, fold. Remember, you can use your hands. And if we find that this is sort of stark or sticky or really feeling quite uncomfortable in the joints but no pain then it might be a really nice invitation to practice definitely this movement more often 
so that we get better joint, mobili uh, joint movement and mobility into the hips. Three, two, and one. Ah, awesome, everybody. We're going to do those step ups. So we're about 15 seconds. Remember, the option is stand on your right foot. And it's like a little step back lunge. It's a shorter lunge. So working single leg balance. So we're on the floor option. Right foot is down, track of the foot, and slowly stand. How slowly can you do this? Maybe that left leg lifts. So taking your time. Use a table, a chair if you need to to help you. So we're building single leg strength here. Really good work through that glute medius, again, which I spoke about before, which starts to open the hip joint, which helps the knees. But just working to your degree. 10 more seconds on this side. Well done, changing sides. So straight into that left side, tripod of the foot, or standing, always remember your options, and take your time. There is absolutely no rush here. In fact, we're also good at moving fast. When we slow things down, we really get to experience the movement in our body. We start to understand where our bodies are in space. And it becomes a hell of a lot harder. Nearly there, team. So five, four, three, two, and one. Good job. Cool. Coming down to the ground, we're going to find those supermans. My clients always say whenever I say something uh, looks easy but not, <laughs> they're always like, oh shit, where are we going here? And it usually is the things that look really simple that can be quite hard. So remember the options in these supermans, option just to stand to the cobra lift, or if you're feeling good through your spine, lift off your feet, arms out to the cactus and we rise. So inhale, lift and squeeze, elbows come back, exhale, coming down. Breathing in and exhale. Now just move in your own breath. Your inhale lifts you and exhale back down. Remember the option, just a cobra. Breathe in, breathe out. So we're never pushing to a place that our bodies don't want to go to. So when we listen to them, we can really ask what they need without pushing. That doesn't mean it's not challenging. <laughs> All right, guys, 10. Three, two, and one. Brace the core. Okay, two options. You can either come in back into that turbo cat, rounded spine, lifting the knees, or start to do a little bit of a crawl here. So forward and back, getting ourselves moving primarily. I want you to think about lifting one hand and one foot off the ground at a time. So as we crawl, the eyes are just in front of the hands, crawling forward and back, or turbo cat. We're going in three, two, and one. Slow it down, move intentionally. Feel your belly muscles draw towards your backbone. If you are balancing, nice glass of moe, whatever it might be on your back, take your time. Not rush. Option, stay in that first variation where the knees just hover, working through the core, which looks like this. Take it where you need to for 10, 9, 8, you can drop the knees if you need to, 7, 6, 5, push out of the hands, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Knees wide. Woo, child pose. Breathe in. And breathe out. Take a few breaths here. Hopefully, hopefully you're nice and warm. All right, guys. So we're going to make our way to stand. So however you get there is fine. Coming into a single leg balance. So grounding down into that right foot. Straight away lifting the left. And moving yourself around the left hip. Come out of your right toes. Some of you might like to explore a little bit more strength now by bending that right knee a little bit more. When you think you're moving slow, move slower if you can. Just exploring anywhere you can go with that left hip. 
Soften the rest of your body, but keep your core braced. Nice work, everyone. Nearly there. Stay with it. So look different on everyone. You focus on you, not what's going on in your screen. Five, four, three, two, and change sides. Go for it. So straight into that left side. Keep going. You're doing amazing, everybody. Again, this can be super little, does not have to be big at all. It can be just standing here on one leg. I remember a gentle reminder to come in with a beginner mind that we're always learning. And where we are is exactly where we need to be. It's not when we stand on one leg and get the leg out to the side. It's, it's not when we get a certain pose or lift a certain amount of weight or get to be a certain amount of weight. It's actually right now. It's in this moment, this is it. So when we learn to appreciate just what we're doing right now, moving and having fun and playing, we take the pressure off and it becomes so much more playful. Time, well done everyone, give it a shake out. Cool, so from here we are gonna move into that crab. So it's the last one in the sequence before we rest. I wanna show you some really fun options here. So you can either come down where we were before into this space here, pushing down, lifting up the hips, squeeze the bum. Or you can bring the right arm over to the left knee and then come back, push through the heels, and we add in an oblique twist. If you're feeling super playful, you can lift up the leg and you can reach across and try to touch the opposite foot. Give it a go. The worst that will happen is you'll fall. And you're at home, nobody cares, so give it a crack. See how you go. Don't worry about what you look like, just have fun along the way. Three, two, one. Either holding here, squeeze your bum, lift your hips. Option two, right fingertips to left side and then vice versa. You'll feel a beautiful twist through the core, massive work into the shoulders and the triceps, and of course, opening ourselves up the opposite way than what we do for work and on our phones and computers and driving, etc. And it's super fun. Maybe you try lifting a foot off the ground. And again, if you stack it, don't worry about it. Great for stabilizing the wrists, working through the, um, the hamstrings and the posterior chain. Five seconds, four, three, two, and one. Down to the ground. Oh, hug your knees to your chest, roll your ankles a bit here. And then bring the knees wide and you can still roll your ankles as you come into a happy baby. So keep the ankle joints and the Achilles moving. Nice. So from the ankle joints now, we're gonna bring the hands up and just rotate the wrists. So the knees can still stay wide, so you're opening the hips. And I want you to spend another five breaths there, rotating through your wrists. Cool. So we have one more set to get through. We're going in about, say, 40 seconds. So you have heaps of options. So you're welcome to stay with the first option that we did which I'll always revisit when we go back through, or um, you can play with other movements in that sequence. So have fun, this is the last round, and then we're gonna give a little, we're gonna, get, we're gonna use the tea towel or the um, takeaway lid. Um, don't worry if you missed that or don't have it, we can modify, but it's a really nice little core exercise. Okay, we're gonna go in 15 seconds. So we're into our hollow body hold. Coming down to the ground, Press your spine into the mat, that's important. Your back's coming off the mat, that's too far for you. Right, we wanna press the spine down, come back to that place where you feel the full vertebra on the ground. Three, two, one. So a hollow body hold. So remember your options. You can start the rock here. We still press the spine down into the floor. Again, we don't wanna arch the back up. If that's happening, come back to here and focus on working that belly towards the spine. Option two, you can rock with one leg out. Change if you've got one leg out. Option three, both the legs out, toes point, the legs are squeezed. We've only got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Swinging the right leg in front of the left. We're just moving now through this. So we want to fold over that right leg. Inhale, come up. Use your core and then fold. So inhale. If you need to put your hands down, put your hands down. Have fun with this one. 
Maybe you're rolling backwards. That's perfect. Have a little play. You know, when we bring that childlike mentality back into our lives, that playfulness, that silliness, that imperfection, we really start to embrace that and let it feel good in our bodies as well. And that, of course, has a knock-on effect, not just to your movement, to the everything you do in life as well. Remember, what we practice grows stronger. So if we continue to practice being rigid, we're just going to become more rigid. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. So single leg step up. So let's just keep moving here. So remember the option is to stand on one foot, if not right foot forward. And this time I'm going to give an option. If you want it, the leg's going to go out to the side. So slowly step up. You go around the joint. So getting right into the hips. Just an option. Jen, just trying to get our bodies moving three-dimensionally as much as possible. Your hands will be um, like levers for you here, as if you're on like a tightrope. So we want to really use them to help us find this balance. Five seconds. Four, three, two, straight away change sides. So take your time, try not to rush it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm finding these super challenging. Definitely feeling this into my glutes and my core. Try to soften the shoulder joints, try to explore the range of the hips whilst focusing on that tripod of the left foot. Alright guys, five, four, three, two, and one. Amazing. Woo, well done. Coming down for those supermans. Again, straight in. So trying to make the most of what we can with the time arms out to the side. Working your variation. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, back down. Breathing in and breathing out. If you're in a full superman, draw those elbows back and open the chest. The feet don't have to come off. Beautiful, staying with that one guys, you're doing really well. You've got 10 more seconds from now. So finding your movement, whether it's just that swing pose. Five, four, three, two, and one. Belly brace. We're gonna go straight to the crawl or turbo cat. Tailbone tucks under, three, two, one. Crawling forward, or into that turbo cat where you're staying still, working your core and working your quads. You're crawling, eyes are just in front of your hands. Try to have one hand and one foot off at the same time. So you've got to go slow in order to do this. All right, guys, you're doing really, really well. So being on our hands is so important for us, especially if we ever fall. We want to make sure we can catch ourselves okay and keep our joints supported. Four, three, two, oh, and one. Oh, well done. Alrighty. Where are we? So single leg balance, coming up to stand. Alrighty, so again, you can work a bit more strength into this one. You can get a little lower, completely up to you, but it's just important that you work towards your range. It does not matter what anybody else is doing. So I want you to focus on you, not what's going on on the screen. I want you to start to move your left leg around, finding ways in which you can balance on one leg, and just exploring your range of motion. Strength into the quads and the glutes when you tip one side. What does your body have to do to Reconnect and find this place of equilibrium and balance. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Straight away to the other side. So a sense of softness, explore, exploration into the hip joint, and massive three-dimensional movement here. Take your time. 
absolutely no right or wrong. Keep your eyes focused on one spot. Play with internal and external rotations. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Beautiful. So from here, we're going to work into our crab. And then lastly, we'll work into those cups. So hands come behind, lifting up through those hips. And then moving through your variation, maybe it's opposite hands to foot, shoulders drawing back. Maybe you stay just lifting off those hips, working into the glutes, really thrusting the hips up, squeezing the butt together. Or you might even want to walk this forward and back for the last probably 15 seconds or so. Coming to a crab walk, really using the hamstrings and strengthening the arms. Four, three, two, and one. So we're going to finish just on a couple of tucks here. So you won't need your mat. If you're at home, we want to either use a tea towel or takeaway lids are really good if you're on carpet. All right, so what we're going to do is work the tea towel on our feet. So we want to be able to slide. So we want to come into a plank position. Fingers are spread wide here. From this position, we're going to tuck up. So the knee's going to come close into the chest. The shoulders stay stacked. And then back out to plank. We're going to go for about six more of these. So in, tuck, and then press back. So five. Beautiful. For four. Full for three. Nice for two. Great for cleaning the floor, and one, rest. We're going to rest in a squat. We're going to do two more rounds of that, and then we're done. So big breaths in, big breaths out. You can also do this down in your forearms if you don't want to be on your hands. You just do what you can. Building that strength into the triceps, the shoulders. Alrighty, round number two. May as well get out of the way. So we're going seven reps. Out to plank pose. So tuck in for one, two, three. Four, hips go high. Five, six, and seven. Find your resting squat. Knees wide, you can sit on whatever you need to. Here, breathe. Well done, everybody. You have one more round. Fingers come down, find your plank pose. Belly lifts in and up, and we can come in for seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and one. Well done, everybody. That's it for this little movement session. I'm Meg, I'm from Redhead Wellness Century. I hope you enjoyed that. It definitely got my heart rate up. Take the time every day to move, to do something that makes you feel good, makes you feel silly, and reminds you of being playful. So, I hope you enjoyed, leave anything behind if you wanted to know more or practice more or know any questions or want to, what you want to see through these videos. So yeah, don't be afraid to leave that comment below. Thanks for jumping on everyone, I'll see you soon.